good day viewers at home. You are welcome to my channel. This is Edwin Stitches. Um, today we'll be looking at um, how to port a rope trouser. We'll be looking at how to port a rope trouser. So um, I have my fabric with me, and then the other materials we'll be making use. So then we'll be making use of our table. We need our passport. We need a ruler, we need um, scissors, we need our scissors, we need our ammo cup, so French cup or whatever, and then we will be making use of a chop. So um, this method that we are making use of it today is a very simple method that is uh, not a common, it's not a common method. So, and um, it is, don't forget it is a rope trouser. It's called um, Sokoto in the um, western part of the um, southwestern part of the Nigeria here. So, let's go to the chase now without um, wasting our time. Um, we have the material here. This is the material we are making use of. So, we are going to turn our fabric to the rough side. So, we are going to put, turn it to the rough side. So this is the right side of the fabric. So I'll be turning the fabric to the rough, to the rough side. And it must be on foot. It must be on foot. So we have this. Make sure that it is well lit. So I'm very lucky the materials is uh, very neat and it's not wrong. So if it is not very neat, if there is a um, wrong make sure that uh, you hire it so that um, everything will lay flat. Just make sure that this edge um, has is here. So now let's go. The measurement of my client. The measurement of my client, the length of the trouser is um, 37, 37, that's the measurement of my client, the length, and then um, the tie or the laps is um, 27, 27, the length is um, 37 and the laps is 20, is 27, so let's call Let's go to the chase now. So here, at the down part here, I'm measuring three and a half for folding, for folding. So three and a half for folding. You can use two, you can use um, two and a half, you can use three, whatever. So I'm using three and a half here. Take three and a half for folding, although I'm still going to trim it off at the end of the day. But uh, I always use uh, three and a half. So, in case if there is any shortage, so I will have a way of, uh, I will have a life saving something there. So, I will measure the length of my client starting from this point, which is a uh, 37, 37, 37. So, I will measure from here, 37. I will mark it at two points so that then uh, I will have a perfect and uh, straight line while drawing it. So I'll count this. We have my straight line here. So there is going to be folding allowance at the top here. There is going to be folding allowance. The folding allowance is going to be two. So So that is where you are going to put your rope or elastic or rope and elastic, whichever way. So, yeah. So the next thing is just to measure our crotch length. So to measure our crotch length, sometimes you can make use of an if, if measurement. You can divide your if measurement by four. If you divide your if measurement by four, then whatever you have. Is going to be your crotch length. If you are working for female trousers, if you are working on a female trousers, it's 
is going to if divided by 4 plus 1. But um, this one is the lead trigger now. So it is going to if divided by 4. But um, without wasting your time, you are you going to you can use uh, 11, 11 hand out. It is going to work. 11, if you are working with um, a fat person, use 11.5. Um, fat person, use 11.5. Or if, let me put it, let me put it this way. If you are working with a um, type of um, adult, probably 23 downwards, 23, 22, 22 and a half, 21, whatever, 11 is going to work. Crotch length of 11. If you are dealing with them, rope trusser, crotch length of 11 is going to work. But um, the moment the tie is uh, 24, 25 and upward like that, use 11 and up. It is going to work for all. It is going to work for all. That is uh, part of the method they use in um, making all this ready to wear of its end. That um, each time you just walk into the kick like this and then you put on any further, you see that you have issue with the um, inner part of the tie. So that is uh, the general method that works for almost everybody. 11, 11 and up depending on the, the tie. If the tie is in 23 upward, use um, 11 and up. So when it is um, 23 downward, use um, 11. It's going to work. So you don't need to stress yourself on um, making use of um, um, laps and um, hips divided by four. So this is where we are going to have our crotch length now. So now, I always add them two, I always come down two inches, two inches, that is where I place my tie, I don't place my tie here, I will tell you the reason why I don't normally place my tie here, although it depends on how you take your measurement anyway, it depends on how you take your measurement, so while taking my own measurement, I don't always have access to the inner tie, because probably someone might be putting on a gym, so to have an um, inner tie, we don't always have an um, access to the inner tie. So we always have um, two inches downward. That is where we measure. So it is always convenient for us to measure tie at that point. So that is the reason why we always come down by two inches from the crotch then two inches. That is where we place our own um, tie measurement because we don't always have um, access to this inner tie while taking measurement. So that is the reason why we always put it here. So. Um, the measurement now is um, if you have prints at this at this edge here, we are not going to count uh, this edge. We are going to cut away the print, probably the right uh, names here. So that one is going to be out of your measurement. So we are going to start your measurement after the print. The print is going to be cut off. But here now, I don't have uh, any prints on the fabric. So I'm just going to extend my measurement to this point. So now I have um, 27. That is going to be, it's going to be, the laps is going to be divided by two. The laps or the tie is going to be divided by two. And that is going to be 13.5, 13 and a half. So I'll measure 13 and a half from the extra edge here to this point. So I'm now going to add one as showing allowance. So in allowance, I don't add my allowance to the back. No, I don't add my measurements to the back. I will tell you the reason why. The reason why I don't normally put my measurement to the back is just to avoid um, all this um, imbalance. I don't want um, my sewing at the end of the day. The sewing, I don't. I just want the sewing to be at the center. When you finally iron it, I want the sewing to be at the center. At the center. So that's the reason why I always um, put um the um, allowance at them um, both um, panel, both front and the back. So the I had them um, one. That one is going to be half for joining, um, half for joining the front to the back. Half here, half here. That is, I'm going to use half to join this place, half to join this place, making one. That's the reason why I'm adding them um, one as allowance, swing allowance. So I will not be adding any swing allowance to the back again. So that one will give you to have your line at the center when you are finally done it will not be as halfway the major common way of um, having it so having said that then we are now going to move don't forget i said the measurement here my tie is a um, 27 that is a um, 13 and a half divided by two so i had a um, 
sewing allowance, which is one. So now making them um, 14 and half. 14 and half. So at this point now, at this crotch length here, this crotch line, so you are now going to add one to this measurement now. That is going to be east. That will normally hard here. So no, we are not going to add that one now. It's not going to be our east now. So so now you are adding this is 14 and half now. So you are now going to add one to it, making 15 and half. 15 and half. So it's now going to be 15 and half. 15 and half. So with this 15 and half now, you are now going to subtract two. 15 and half, you are now going to subtract two. Two. So you can have two and half. Two, two and half. But it shouldn't be less than two. It shouldn't be less than two. So you are going to have two. You are going to subtract two here. So then you draw your straight line. Draw your straight line. So I just want to know what is next now. I have a 13 quarter. 13 quarter. Just to have the perfect straight line. 13 quarter. So just to have a perfect straight line. So you draw your straight line like this. So you are going to link this one to the top here. Then you are almost done. So the next thing is just at this point, at this point, you are going to mark out one. One. That one is where you are going to put your rope or elastic or rope and elastic. You are going to mark out one here. So one. Don't know if you are seeing it clearly. So So you are going to mark out one. So mark out one here. And then at this point, at the other side here, you are going to mark two. Two. So because you are going to fold them these two, fold it inward like this, so that then this is where your pocket is going to start. So this one will not cover the pocket. You just mark out so we use half to fold it. So at the end of the day, it's going to fall here. So when it is time for sewing, you are going to see that one later. So you mostly cover your pocket. So and then from this two, you are going to measure seven. Conventional way. Conventional measurement now. Seven for the pockets. Seven for the pocket now. Pocket open. It is common. That is seven for almost everybody. Seven for the pocket. So now, having said that, now let's now move on, move back to the down part of the trouser now. Down part of the trouser. So at this um, hemming point here, at this bottom here, the bottom side. So you are going to come inside by one. You come inside by one. You take away one from here. Take away one from here. So whatever you want the opening to be, the mouth of the bottom now, whatever you want it to be, for my client now, I want seven and half because um, the person is a bit fat. So I want seven and half, depending on you anyway, depending on your client. I want seven and half. So I'll be adding that same one as showing allowance. Don't forget the added one as showing allowance. So the next thing is now just to draw our line. So you are not going to connect this line. This line, you will connect it to this end uh, where you take your time measurement here. Connect the line. So use straight line or you can use your pants off. So you connect this. So if you like, you can just blend it away like this. But it doesn't matter. So now, here at this point, you have your straight line too. Just straight line. So probably something like uh, six, at least probably like um, six inches from here, six inches from here. Although it doesn't matter, just make sure you have a straight line, but then it's good to have like six or something like five, six upward like that. 
So now the next thing is just now to connect in this point to this same um, point. So using your pants cup, use your pants cup. It is always good to get your pants cup. It's good to assist you a lot. So just connect this, this point. I don't want to use this extreme end here. I don't want it to be too tiny. So I'll be shifting it off. So just make sure you connect it together. Connect the points. So and lastly, so here we are going to connect this point, this point to this same side. So something you come up by two inches. Two inches. So you don't have your what do we call it? Um ammo cup. You can just come in by half here. Then you connect it. You connect it like that. But I'll be using this to do that. So that I will have them perfect results. If you don't have this, you can just use them two here, two above here, then half here. So just uh, try to connect the lines like that. So and then you are done. You are done like that. So or you can use here too. You can use this. And connect it so you are still going to have a perfect result at the end of the day so let's now cut it now, let's notch in those same points that let's notch in those points why notching you notch by half or quarter depending on them um, what you are going to use to sew it now but then um, because um, we are sewing by half because i added the uh, one as allowance now so half here half here so i'll be notching by half so your notching shouldn't be more than half. Half. That is what I'm going to use to notch because I will be sewing by half. So this is what I'm using to sew. So the notch by half. So at this point too, the notch by half. Shouldn't be more than half. So you mark out the rough side, chop it, make sure you chop it. So the next thing is now to put the front back panel. Back panel. This is the front panel. So before I do that, let me quickly recap. I said I I leave the allowance of um, my allowance here is a um, three and a half. You can use three, you can use two, whatever. So I'm using three and a half here as my allowance. So from this, uh, the measurement of my client, the the length of the client is in that seven. So I measure that seven to this point. So I have my straight line. Then the next thing I did is uh, I had it two as a folding allowance. I had it two as my folding allowance. So after that, I make uh, my crotch length, which is a uh, eleven. I use the eleven and half. Eleven and half. It seems like they are there on here. I use eleven and half, but then it seems like the thing is not up to eleven and half again. But we're still going to work anyway. So I wanted to use eleven and half. I should have used them eleven and half because the person is a bit fat. But in eleven, we still work anyway. So now I have eleven here, and I had it two. I had it two for this place where I put my last measurement. I said the reason why I did this is because we always put our laps here two inches away from the crotch length. It is because we don't always have access while taking measurements. We don't always have access to the inner type while taking measurements. So that is the reason why we take it a bit lower than the, the crotch length here. That is where we put our, um, what do we call it, our tie measurement, which is the laps measurement. So now, we said at this point, so now we had a um, one as sewing allowance, sewing allowance. So we have um, at the end of the day 13 and a half, which is um, 27, is the actual measurement of the client. So it is divided by two, which is um, 13.5, 13 and a half plus one. That is um, 14 and a half, sewing allowance. 
So now, from here now, we now added additional one for ease. So we had additional one, making them 15 and half. So that is where we put on the crotch length here, 15 and half. So, and then we come in by two. For ease here, two. Coming by two, it mustn't be less than two. So it can be more than two. It can be two and a half, two quarter, whatever. So this um, two here, two. So that is what we've marked here. And then whatever we have left here, that's um, if this two you are going to connect to this point, but then uh, I just measure it, it is a uh, 13 quarter. So I measure this in 13 quarter the top here so that I'll be able to have a perfect straight line. So I bring my straight line, I bring my straight line. So here at this point, I said um, we have um, your arm hook up, you can just uh, put it here and cut. So, but if you don't have arm hook up, so here you come up by two inches from here, and then at this point, at this center here, you come up, come up by half, then you connect. Then here at this point, at this holding point here, at this point, you measure one. That is where you are going to put your rope or elastic one because um, the wideness of elastic is m1 so we put one here so at this point you said you are going to put a two two that is um, because when you fold like this you can see when you finally fold it so you are going to do this so that you not cover the pocket so we have two we still have the two other ones there so two two here then seven for the pockets seven for the pocket so at the down part here, we said that we are going to come in by half by one. So you come in by one. So I'm taking it to be one. Then you are going to link this point to the high area here. And then whatever the bottom is, the opening here, whatever is, you had one as the same allowance you are using to sew it. So we have one here. And then we use our pants for to connect it. So then we notch by half. So that is all for um, the front panel of the trouser now. So let's now move on to the back end panel of the trouser. We are almost done. So let's quickly move on to the back panel, back panel of the trouser. Don't forget we are cutting a rope trouser, which is called um, Sokutu. A rope trouser, which is called um, Sokutu. So not everyone will like a um, normal or this um, I'm a senator um, trouser because um, attaching sleeves sometimes could be frustrating because um, if you are working with them, the client that is in a very far away, and then if at the end of the day there is issue with the um, the zipper, then there is going to be an issue. If there is issue with the zipper, probably it runs out, so they may not get a place to repair it on time. So that's the reason why some clients they just prefer this uh, rope. Um, and trouser because then nothing is going to happen to it and it's last longer so now at this point we are here so you are going to trim this place let it be right so here at this point make sure it is in one one now one here at this point we leave allowance of one extra one the reason why we have them um, one here, the reason why we have extension of one here, it is because just to avoid all this um, imbalance of um, inseam, imbalance of inseam, so that as to avoid a case like this. So inseam, so that's the reason why we always have them. Um, because when you sew, there is going to be jump of inner, of inseam. So that's the reason why we always want one here, so that at least this one will augment the shortage you're supposed to have at the inseam here, at the damp part here. So now, just add one here. Just add one here. That's all you are going to do here. Then you cut. So while cutting, so you are going to add one here too. One. Then you connect them. You come down and you connect them this point. Come down and then at this point now, you connect them this place to this side. You can see. It. 
So just the way you cut your normal pan crosser. So you connect this point you, to this point. So then you come down. You connect this to this point, then you slant it until you get to this point. Don't cut like this. This one is too small. Just make sure you go until then it reaches in this point. Then you balance it all and cut the normal. And then we are done. We are done like this. So finally, finally, here is all we have at the end of the day. We have this. So you are going to mark um, the rough side so that we don't make mistakes. Right? And, so, and then we are done on how to make a um, group and further. The next thing is just to cut a uh, the only thing that is next is just to cut your pockets. It's just to cut your pockets, but then uh, we don't normally cut the pockets immediately. We make sure that uh, we are through with the final cutting so that uh, we will not abuse the materials. If the materials is left, then you cut the pockets. But if the material is not um, remain, if you don't have um, enough, then you can use um, another material to cut them. Um, but if you are dealing with a um, three and then you are not working with captain, then you can cut your um, pocket immediately. So please, if, um, if this video has uh, made any meaning to you, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if uh, you have not uh, subscribed. And then um, if you are in returning, um, we um, really appreciate for watching. So thanks so much. Um, See you next time when we shall be meeting on um, how to make him um, how to sew this um, trailer. You say cheers.